Sothro Gojo is a sorcerer blessed with both six eyes and limitless, something that hasn't occurred in over 400 years in his own family. Gojo is not only the strongest sorcerer of the current era, but of all time. In chapter 235, Gojo won the title of strongest, defeating Sukuna with his divine gifts as they were proven too powerful even for the king of curses. Everyone in the community is now calling him Fraud Kuna. That's how hard he bodied him. As a result, this made Kenjaku's plan to seal Gojo away even more valid because if he was around, the culling game that was planned for 1000 years would never even begin. There's a reason this man was shitting his pants as soon as he saw him when he got unsealed. Kenjaku has been a menace to every Six Eyes user for centuries. In fact, did you know there are four other Six Eyes users that the manga has mentioned? And Kenjaku is intertwined with all of them. So to begin explaining Gojo's family, it's a great place to start by stating that the Six Eyes is so powerful that it automatically places the family as a powerhouse that is part of the three prestigious Jujutsu clans. All of them have an ancient history going back to the foundation of sorcery itself. The origin of Gojo's family stems from Sugawara no Michizane. The Sugawara are a real life aristocratic family that was founded in the year 781. They served as scholars and government officials in the imperial court. However, this clan was divided into six branches later on, one of which, if you guessed it, was Satoru Gojo's family. So the first sorcerer connected by blood to the Six Eyes and Limitless was Michizane 1000 years ago. Just like Gojo, he was an incredibly gifted child, becoming a scholar and scoring a place in the court at a very young age. He later became known as one of the three vengeful spirits of Japan as he was a big shot sorcerer in the Heian era. This explains how Gojo found out in the prequel Jujutsu Kaisen Zero that his student Yuta Okotsu was his distant relative and cousin. Gojo told us in chapter 12 that 80% of talent in a sorcerer stems from genetics, which explains why he and Yuta are so skilled in Jujutsu with high curse energy reserves. Gege Akatami, the author of the manga, confirmed that Gojo grew up quite pampered by his family, essentially being treated as a king and uh, spoiled rotten. Well, we can see that a little bit in the anime, can't we? <laughs> He's really funny and goofy. As a result, we see Satoru doing whatever he wants, and it's clear that they have placed complete faith in him as their leader, since having the six eyes automatically makes you the clan head. In fact, they taught him Jujutsu secrets as well, like the falling blossom emotion that came in clutch in the battle against Sukuna. This technique is exclusive to the big three families. Now since the Sugawara clan and Michizane existed in the Nara and Heian era, it's clear that the Gojo clan has been around since Master Tengen began preaching the foundation of Jujutsu through Buddhism. They were even present in the golden age of sorcery, the peak of vicious sorcerers, when Ryuman Sukuna walked the world in his true form. He was regarded as a calamity that ravaged people and villages, being worshipped as a deity and no one, even the leaders and imperial court couldn't do anything against him except abiding to his wishes. But to counter this evil, as balance is required in the world, Gojo's family is bestowed with an incredibly strong inherited curse technique, a divine power and fate, the Six Eyes, which is extremely rare even in the Gojo clan due to the requirements of its manifestation. You see, Tengen explained in chapter 145 that over the past 1000 years, Six Eyes users have had an important role to fulfill. Their fates were tied to the keeper and creator of all the barriers surrounding Japan, Tengen herself. They were meant to protect the Star Plasma Vessel from people who want her to ascend to a non-human state. And if she didn't merge, the world would be destroyed. This merger happens every 500 years. And there were three Star Plasma Vessels present within Yuki where she didn't comply. 
However, since the latest one was supposed to be in 2006, we can estimate that the two other mergers were in the early 1500s and 1000s. This means that Six Eyes users of those periods were successful in protecting Tengen and the vessel to merge with. However, there was a huge problem. None other than Kenjaku. Every Six Eyes user was a hindrance to his plan of creating a new world. Kenjaku wants to optimize curse energy so that chaos is spread throughout the world and humans have to evolve in order to survive. According to him, if everyone was converted into to a sorcerer and all of them were to fight each other to death, then a certain number of standout people would be left. These will be more elite and far better than the others. When this happens rapidly on a huge scale, it will lead to the evolution of the whole society, bringing back the golden age that he is from. But to do so, Kinjaku needs to affect the entirety of Japan and force evolution, something he couldn't possibly do on his own. This is where Tengen comes in. By controlling Tengen, Kinjaku could control the barriers of the Jujutsu world and an evolved version of Master Tengen which could merge with humanity itself. Hence, Kenjaku set out on a quest to acquire Tengen but he kept failing over and over because of the Six Eyes users. To put things into perspective, the only person to ever go head to head with a Six Eye and Limitless was the user of the Ten Shadows technique back in the Edo period. Satoru Gojo revealed his ancestor who was just like him. This Gojo clan and leader bestowed with both these powers got into an argument with the Zenin clan leader with the Ten Shadows in front of the nobles. Things got distorted to the point that both of them fought each other to death. No wonder the Zenin have such beef with Gojo even today. This kind of reminds me of like these Asian family meetings that I have uh, growing up and uh, one uncle fighting with another and things get out of hand. And they still remember, you said this 20 years ago. Oh, I don't like you. Overall, Gojo's purpose is to break the destiny sorcerers are stuck in. The vicious death that looms over them because of the Jujutsu Society's hostile attitude towards the strong who don't fall within their parameters. However, this didn't stop Kenjaku from trying. The first Six Eyes user he fought actually defeated him, which made Kenjaku around the 1500s ensure that both the Star Plasma Vessel and the next Six Eyes user were dead within less than a month of their birth. However, on the day of the merger, a new vessel and a Six Eyes user emerged out of nowhere, much like Randy Orton. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Anyway, despite the fact that only one Six Eyes user could exist at a time, after all, if two Six Eyes user were to exist at once, it would defy God's law of balance. So unexpectedly, a new Six Eyes user was born right after the death of the previous one that Kenjaku had done. So keeping the assassinations in mind, the Gojo family kept this birth under wraps as witnessing Kenjaku infiltrating their family to take their leader out was really alarming to them. As a result, Kenjaku kept meeting failure with the respawning of these Six Eyes users, much like the tale behind the Gojo clan ancestor Michizane. It is said in the Nihon Shoki that anyone who plotted against Sugawara no Michizane died one after another. It's stated that Fujiwara Tokihira banished him to leave the capital, only for Michizane to die at the age of 30. He became a vengeful spirit, which in Jujutsu Kaisen is formed when those whose deaths are cursed have the possibility of having their spirit corrupted and transformed. In fact, sorcerers have an increased chance of turning into curses after death if they are not killed by sorcerers which just so happens to occur. For example, in chapter 219, corrupt officials who existed in Sukuna's era akin to their desire supported Michizane's removal, but they ended up all dying. Many members who had planned and gathered to throw Michizane 
out died of lightning and the people who did not die eventually did within three months as they became sick. This goes to show that any force against six eyes is bound to fail as Kenjaku's first failed attempt 1000 years ago made him sit back to create another plan. In that time, he forged binding vows with ancient sorcerers for the Cullen Games that would take place in the year 2018. For example, in the 1600s, Kenjaku claimed to Kashimo that even though he had witnessed the power of other Six Eyes users, Sukuna was still the absolute strongest sorcerer he had seen thus far. And he was also the one that taught him how to become immortal by splitting his soul into fingers to traverse the ages. This enticed these freaking whack jobs to do a binding vow to join the game. Now even with fate connecting all sorcerers with its chains, things were about to change as Toji came into the picture to break them, quite literally stated in the manga. Till the day of the merger of Riko with Tengen, Gojo continuously used his abilities to protect her whilst being supported by Geto. But the strongest duo of the Jujutsu world failed this mission because of Toji's master plan, killing not just Riko but Gojo as well. This broke the cycle of fate as the Gojo family failed to accomplish their duty for the first time, altering the destinies of everyone involved. One monkey without a drop of curse energy in him had changed the Jujutsu world forever, causing a huge butterfly effect. The first one being Satoru ascending to godhood by unlocking reverse curse technique. Secondly, it resulted in Tengen turning into more of a cursed spirit, held together only through her barrier techniques, which created the perfect opportunity for Kenjaku. He would go on to possess Geto, who had the cursed spirit manipulation technique and formulated a new plan. The only way for his plan to succeed was to seal the six eyes, since the last two years users defeated him and the one he did kill just respawned. So with the help of curses, the Shibuya incident arc is orchestrated successfully. It's evident that the presence of just one Satoru Gojo is enough to upturn the balance of power in the Jujutsu world, making the influence of his clan scale to his own Jujutsu. Which is why people like Naobito, the head of the Zenin clan, were more than happy to let him be sealed. After all, his birth alone alone had altered the equilibrium between curses and sorcerers. The side of the sorcerers became so powerful that the cursed users who held the freedom to enjoy and make money from trampling on the weak were pushed back into the shadows. In fact, the overall power of cursed spirits grew just to compensate for Gojo's existence, basically trying to return balance to the world. Just like when an athlete beats a record in track and field and the whole world has to keep up with them. However, being the strongest comes at a price only Satoru knows, since even as a child, he was the target of many assassination attempts from none other than the great Jujutsu clans. Since the Heian era, these big three have been far from ethical. They are made of people hungry for power, with enough misogyny and cheap trickery to last entire generations across 1000 years. This was proof when as soon as Satoru was sealed, all hell erupted in the Jujutsu world as clans started colluding with the higher ups and even Kenjaku. Sorcerers started fighting each other and the Jujutsu society fell into ruins, foregoing their fundamental goal of protecting humans. This is the very corruption that Satoru wanted to nip in the bud because it was rooted so deeply that simply killing the higher ups of the Jujutsu society would do no good. They would just be replaced with other corrupt people and the cycle would continue. Hence, he decided to channel his strength into fostering a new generation of strong sorcerers who would fight with each other, keeping aside their biases and making them his nakama, therefore creating a new family. Now to enjoy more peak fiction, why not watch the video on your screen right now? Bye bye.